Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Breen. Buddy's on the table next to me taking a nap, so he will not be appearing in this video, unfortunately. He likes to pop in from time to time. Uh, I might start a video series where we just like, you know, hey, let's talk, to, let's hang with Buddy. I haven't decided yet. He, I have to get his permission first, and he's kind of a fussy pants. Anyways, today we're talking about superstations. I'm specifically talking about Turner Broadcasting Systems, known as TBS, and WGN, which has no acronym because it's it's literally just the call letters to the TV station. Uh, the first two superstations, which would later evolve into cable TV, which we now know today as the thing that came before streaming. This is not a retrospective or memories on all of cable. I may have already done that one. If I haven't, I'll, I'll do it eventually because I've got a lot of fun cable facts and memories. And I try to break out the individual cable networks and talk about them independently uh, because it's more fun that way. I didn't want to do TBS without talking about WGN. TNT will get its own retrospective, but I'll probably um, do a comparison or you know, merger with that, with another similar network, because TNT has more in common with another network than TBS or WGN, which is, by the way, a dead network, so I don't know, I don't know if TBS is even still around, I know WGN is dead, they, they turned it into a fucking right-wing propaganda piece of shit, uh, which, do not watch that, please, for the love of God, um, Newsmax, I think is what it's called. I shouldn't have even said its name. Anyways, um, so TBS and WGN have very similar origin stories. Basically, they're both broadcast TV networks uh, in a local market. WGN is in Chicago. It's a, it's a local broadcast TV station in Chicago. And TBS is WTBS in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I can't remember where is Chicago. Is it Illinois, I think? Or is it Michigan? I think it's Illinois. Chicago, Illinois? I I don't know my geography. I apologize. I, I went to public school. What do you expect? <laughs> All right. Um, so they both started as broadcast TV stations that sometime in the past, late 70s, early 80s, somewhere in the past, when cable was a concept, a new thing, they jumped on the bandwagon. So what they did was they bought satellite feed um, bandwidth, whatever you want to call it, and would rebroadcast their local programming to a national audience. This was unheard of at the time, which is why it was called a super station. Now, brief, brief, like 30 second history of cable TV. Cable TV came about because there were people who could not get television over the antenna via rabbit ears because, you know, either they lived too far away or they lived in the mountains or they lived in big cities and the bl buildings blocked the signal or whatever. So what cable was, was they would have an antenna somewhere and pick up the signal and then they would run a coax cable from that antenna to your television and charge you a subscription for access to that. That's what cable started out as. Later, we got TBS and WGN and HBO and CNN, etc. And then it just blew up in the 90s. It did not blow up until the 90s. In the 70s, you had five or six cable networks, which were like the local networks. And that was it. If you had cable, you just got the local networks. So you had to pay for it because you couldn't get it over the air. That's it. That's all it was. And then in the 80s, we had about... I'd say 15 to 17-ish thereabouts cable networks that came on the scene. And then we got literally fucking hundreds of them in the 90s. It just fucking blew up. Too many cable channels to talk about in the 90s. I know a large chunk of them are just sports networks, but th that is what it is. And music channels and etc. But cable becomes a thing in the 90s. Anyways... It was the same thing with satellite. If you had a satellite dish in the 70s or older, you had this big giant piece of metal in your backyard. And what you did was you had a box that you punched numbers on a remote control. We had one of these. 
and it would move the satellite and point it at the individual channels in space. Whichever satellite was beaming that channel, you would point the satellite to that, the dish to that satellite and get the channel. That's how you got TBS and WGN in the early days. If you lived out in the country and couldn't get cable like we did and were too far away to get a strong signal over the antenna. Um, however, we didn't always have money for this. Uh, so most of the time we were just stuck with the, the antenna. So TBS was a godsend for me because we, we finally did get cable. I want to say it was like 1990 or 91 when we got cable. In our first cable package, we had like seven channels. We had the then four networks because they added Fox finally. So we had four networks, ABC, NBC, CBS, and P Fox and PBS. Um, so those were, was that four or five networks? That was five networks. So we had the five networks and then we had TBS and WGN. Uh, later they would add CNN and TNT, but our first cable package, that's all we had. Now HBO was sold separately. We did not pay for it, but we would get it from time to time when they did a free weekend. And then they would just gradually add more channels as time went on. You could pay extra for the Disney channel, but that was extra. It was a premium channel like HBO. You had to pay extra for it. So we did not have the Disney channel. In the early days, WGN and TBS were broadcast TV stations. So they functioned just like the broadcast TV stations. So they had their news segment, they had their sports, they had their talk shows, they had their game shows, etc. And like network TV shows, during the filler time slots, because they didn't have primetime TV, um, they ran reruns of other TV shows. Now what was interesting about TBS and WGN was they would keep running those reruns all through primetime. So like during primetime, the networks were showing their new shows that they just that they were still producing, that they just made. Uh, TBS and WGN were just showing reruns of TV shows the other networks had already aired. So that's how they started out. Gradually, they would both slowly start to invest in original programming. WGN, not as much because they were limited by the FCC licenses because they were mandated by law to show a certain amount of local programming throughout the day. So they didn't have as much money or time slots to invest in original programming. So they didn't as much. Um, TBS, however, was owned by Turner Broadcasting Corporation, which was subsequently owned by Time Warner, which was a huge conglomerate they had the money to sink into it and so TBS eventually got its own original programming the one of not the literal literal first I don't think but one of the first um, original I'll say programs they got um, ran for a very long time was Monday Night Raw I think that was TBS now I'm not sure that could have been USA. Now I forgot to mention USA because they're not a superstation. USA was a cable network. It was birthed in the cable generation. So that's a whole separate thing. It's not a superstation. We're just talking about the superstations. So when you watch TBS and WGN, you would get to a point where they stopped showing reruns of sitcoms, mostly sitcoms, but occasionally other shows like you know, Murder, She Wrote, and, you know, um, Columbo, and things like that. Uh, but mostly they would just show reruns, and then they would have to take a break to show local news, which WGN eventually turned into national news, kind of, and then eventually they just folded and merged and then rebranded as a news, a 24-hour news network, which sucks, but it is what it is. As far as I know, do not quote me on this, TBS is still around. Um, but I'm not 100% because I do have Max, and they do not have a subsection for TBS programming, which I think is weird because they own TBS. 
Uh, they sh I don't know. Whatever. Max is stupid. The fucking morons running Max have no brains. They do not how to know know how to run a streaming service. They're sitting on a catalog of shit that they don't put on the service, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing, dipshits? I don't fucking know. This could be a three-hour video about me bitching about Max, and I have enough to say about Max. I could bitch for three hours, but I won't. I mostly pay for it because of Friends, and I also like horror movies, and they got some good horror movies, especially the uh, Friday the 13th, which I like to rewatch, like, frequently. And occasionally they have the Nightmare on Elm Streets, but I'm getting off on a tangent. So between the two, WGN and TBS both did this really awesome thing, which was really awesome in the 80s, uh, less awesome in the 90s, but still pretty cool, where they would... Uh, on weekends, Friday starting on Friday nights, running through Saturday and Sunday, they would air movies. Not not cartoons, not sitcoms, not TV shows, movies. This was really cool. Now, the networks did this as well. Um, ABC had, like, uh, The Wonderful World of Disney, where they would air Disney movies, and CBS would run... They all ran movies on the weekend, um, starting on Friday nights. And they all had their different show that would um, be intercut or introduce the movie. WGN mostly focused on, um, I would say, WGN's movies were mostly, um, I want to say, uh, canon. They were mostly canon pictures, low-budget films, mostly, you know, like B-movies. Uh, TBS, on the other hand, they probably invested a little bit more money because they had shows like Dinner and a Movie and um, other shows like that, themed shows, just like USA did, where they would have a show right with a wraparound that would set the tone of the movie. So TBS showed a lot more blockbusters than WGN did. Now, that's not to say WGN never showed blockbusters, because they sometimes did, but they mostly showed B-movies, and TBS mostly showed blockbusters. So TBS is where you would watch The Breakfast Club, Back to the Future, um, Indiana Jones, stuff like that. It, it felt like, this is probably a false memory or a Mandela effect, if you will, it felt like TBS ran Back to the Future seven days a week it felt like they probably didn't but they aired it so goddamn much that it felt like it was always fucking on what I remember watching on WGN was like I do remember watching Superman 3 on WGN which is where I get the impression that it was B-movies I also remember watching Beastmaster on WGN and um, other rubbish like that I don't remember, like... I, I know I saw... Crit I just talked about Critters 2 on my horror trans video. Because uh, I just did a review of it. I know I watched Critters 2 on WGN because I remember it. I remember watching it. I remember watching Return of the Living Dead on WGN. I would call those B-movies. But I know I watched Back to the Future and Indiana Jones. And movies like that. The Breakfast Club is another one that comes to mind. Pretty in Pink. I know I watched those movies on TBS because those, they were always on. They were always showing something like that. Uh, so we did, as a family, watch dinner and a movie. We like actually like planned it. It was like, hey, dinner and a movie. So we would sit down with our popcorn and watch dinner and a movie. Now we would usually eat, we called it supper because I grew up in the Midwest. We would watch, we would eat supper, you know, sometimes while we were watching TV, sometimes at the dinner table, supper table, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that's not important. But we did watch. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say supper in a movie because I hate that word dinner. I hate the word dinner. We use dinner to refer to lunch. Some people call it lunch, the noon meal. So breakfast in the morning, dinner at noon, supper in the evening. That's the correct way to say it. Uh, lunch is a goddamn sack you take on a field trip or to, to, you take to work. Anyways, I digress. If you ever hear me say I'm going to go eat dinner, I'm talking about what you would call lunch. Just so you know. 
supper is what when I when I'm talking about the nighttime meal, it's supper. I always only ever say supper. This is absolutely a Midwest thing. Definitely a Kansas thing, if nothing else. Anyways, uh, so they had supper in a movie. And we would watch it as a family. And we watched other shows, but I don't fucking remember them all. But between the two, another staple of both networks, they both aired it at different time slots, so I got to watch it all day long, was Saved by the Bell. Now, I'm pretty sure TBS ran it more, uh, more like they had a big block of it, like a two-hour block of Saved by the Bell. And I think WGN just ran like an episode of it every day or something like that. Maybe two episodes. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure. Not 100%, but I'm 75% sure I watched uh, Saved by the Bell the college years on TBS, but not 100% sure. So don't quote me on that. Um, I could be misremembering. This could be another Mandela effect. I don't know. Anyways, um, uh, between the two, when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, I actually liked TBS or WGN, excuse me, better than TBS. The reason why I liked WGN was because they were showing B movies, which I was a fucking fan of, and. Bozo the Clown, which I enjoyed. Even though I hate clowns, I'm scared of clowns. It's weird that I liked Bozo the Clown, and I don't even remember why. I just remember watching it. And also, I used to watch the evening news on WGN and, because they would show the lotto numbers late, late after the news. So I, I would prefer the WGN newscast to the local newscast, although my parents would watch the local news too because, you know, they were interested in what was going on in the world. And this was before CNN. CNN did exist, but it wasn't like standard cable yet. It was one of those, call your cable provider and ask for CNN. We did eventually get CNN, and it was just like, eh, not for us. My parents didn't like it. I didn't like it. It was just like, mm, whatever. So anyways, those are my TBS and WGN memories. Uh, as little bit of knowledge I have on them for doing research back when in college when I studied broadcasting we did a whole unit on these two networks the Superstations and the uh, beginning the rise and fall of cable well rise uh, at the time it was rise of cable it hadn't fallen yet because streaming wasn't a thing yet Netflix streaming had just started right before I went to college it only been out for like a couple of years and I don't even know if Hulu was out yet. I'm not 100% when Hulu came on the scene. It may have been. I don't remember. I'm not 100%. But I know we didn't have Max, Disney Plus, or anything else. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm fairly, fairly certain of that because those came way after college. Because Max is relatively new and Disney Plus came out like three years ago? Anyways, so yeah. Anyways, I do remember what, uh, our unit on the rise of the Superstation. Uh, we had a whole unit. In, in class on just CNN alone um, because my professor incorrectly predicted that Al Jazeera was going to become the new t uh, CNN because of their coverage of the Arab Spring which is what I was going with was going on when I was in college and when I was in college in class uh, was when we got the the news about bin Laden being shot so we had to turn on the news and watch it and my fucking professor made us watch Al Jazeera's coverage of it because, I don't know, whatever. He was obsessed with Al Jazeera. Which, by the way, they didn't last. I think that network shut down after a while. So they did not replace CNN. You know, so he was wrong about that. But anyways, he was wrong about a lot of stuff because he said streaming would never take off. Um, because he had, re he had weird reasons. He was like, streaming will never take off. And he gave us his reasons why, but he was, he was an old man. He didn't understand what was going on. He probably didn't know how to use a computer. Maybe he could send an email, I guess, or he had his assistant send his emails for him. I don't know. Anyways, uh, WGN no longer exists. The last I heard, TBS is still around. So I would say, final thoughts, TBS won, I guess, because WGN is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. I don't know if the local uh, Chicago TV station is still broadcasting in the local market. I don't know. But anyways, I don't fucking watch cable anymore. Anyways, and in later years, like 2000 on, TBS leaned heavily into original programming. That all sucked. 
TBS did not produce one TV show ever in its entire existence that was a scripted show I liked. The only stuff I ever watched on TBS was like movies and sitcoms. Mostly, mostly Saved by the Bell. Anyways, what are your memories of WGN and TBS? Which one did you watch more? What do you remember watching on them? And please feel free to respectfully, please, correct me in the comments where I may have been wrong. Because I'm pretty sure my information is not... 100% factual, but it's going based on what I remember. And my memory is, well, you know, it is what it is. Stay cool.